thing over and over again. I, I feel like I'm dealing with a demon. I don't even cast it out. It's my, not my job to do. The Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils. But a person that get a devil cast out of them, want to be cast. they need to want to be delivered. Because if you cast it out of them and they don't want to change the lifestyle, it's going to keep happening over and over and over again. And so we got a lot of churches where you know what people do? They're not casting out devils. They're just entertaining demons. Mm. Just a big demon show. Casting the same devils out all over and over again. The people don't want to be changed. And everybody thinks that's just powerful. Ooh, that's just powerful. And they keep on doing that over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And they think the man of God is so powerful, but he's not powerful. He's being ignorant. He's powerful, but he's ignorant to what's going on. Because that those spirits want to wear him out. God said, no, there's people I see stuff on. God said, don't even deal with it until they repent. Then they get mad. Pastor, you seen it? Why didn't you say nothing? Because you were not ready. Jesus said in his word, he said, I have many things to say to you, but you are not ready to handle them right now. See, some of you, God got to wean you. There's some friends that you go to church with that you're not meant to walk with in your destiny. Oh. Uh... Because they're not ready to go where God calls you. They can't take where you're going. You need people who got vision around you. You need people who believe God. See, when the mature in Christ, be like, God, whatever you got to take, take it. They got to go. They got to go. Come on. Come on. Because you're the most valuable thing I found. There are some people who are guessing. I don't know. I'm, they trying Jesus. Let me just see. If this, is it, if this Jesus thing don't work, I'm going back to my relationship. If this Jesus thing don't going to work, I'm going back to that old job. I'm just going to see it. You, you testing the waters. And that's what you get. You get, you get, you, okay, watch this. You know how you, uh, in the mail, they give you a trial membership. <laughs> you know, what, what do you do? Uh, 30, uh, fitness, the fitness place, 20, 30 day trial. After that 30 days, you got to pay. It's going to cost you something. You know, everybody in there working out day by day. I can go, because as long as it's for free. Woo, I love it. Woo, 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 woo. I love it, right? So then after that 30 days, you try to go back there and say, you can't get in without paying for what you want to enter into. See, <laughs> see, people come to church, they get an experience. Oh, oh, I really got touched by that love. Oh, I really got touched. God said, now if you want it, you got to pay for it. Not money. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It doesn't cost you no money. It's going to cost you that life that you got that you holding on to. It's going to cost you everything that's valuable to you. Because some people, man, money ain't nothing to them. About God said, but whatever is value, put it on the altar. You want that change that you saw? You experienced Christ, but do you want that change that's coming with? I'll let you see. You, you just had a preview. Many people get caught on the preview, but never never see the whole film of their life. They, they Christian life is based off of prophecy. Prophecy is previews. See, the prophecy, the prophecy, those that are in prophetic ministries, that prophecy is a glimpse of what the full film is. And if the prophecy is real good, you're going to want to go see the full film. But many people get caught up on the commercial or get caught up on the trailer, but never go see the real film because they just bounce from place to place. That's like me going to the theater after the first you know, 15 minutes, they show the trailer and getting up. I paid, I paid my money to see the actual film, but I just wanted to see what new was coming out. Uh-oh. Oh, God, what you going to do that's new? What you going to do that's new? Going for this church to this church to this church? Oh, this is a prophet. Tell me what God's saying. And you still ain't deal with God's saying because you're in disobedience. Because nobody confronted you at the fact that you got to walk them prophecies out. Uh oh. Watch this. Let's go, Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. Let's go to. Um Deuteronomy 25. It might be the devil, it might be the Lord. Yes, chapter 25. Come on, Deuteronomy 25, come on computer, there we go. Deuteronomy 
Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse 1. It says, when men have a dispute, they are to take it to court and the judges will decide the case, acquitting the innocent and condemning the guilty. Right? So if a person is, if, if a person is innocent, right, then the charges are dropped. If a person is guilty, then they'll be condemned. They'll be judged. Okay? That's why the Bible says that if any man is in Christ, then there's an, there's an acquitting for him. Even if he's guilty, God justifies him. But his, watch this. People misread that justification. Because let me tell you something. There are some things that you've done wrong that just because God justifies you don't mean he ain't going to deal with you about it. Uh-huh. We do stuff where we go, there's no condemnation. As soon as somebody comes against there's no ignorant of the scripture. You're gonna, you still going to have to pay for that fine because God going to rebuke you. He gonna, you're going to get in that word and he's going to teach you what you did wrong, what was wrong in your character. You're just not going to go scot-free. That's why a lot of people run to Jesus because we don't teach them the fullness of what this is. And it's like, oh, I'm going to come to Jesus because all I got to do is just throw my stuff to Jesus. And he's going to deal with it and I ain't got to deal with nothing. No, 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 no. You can't just talk to people any kind of way. You're going to reap what you sow. You cuss somebody out, they cuss you back. Deal with it. You receive that thing. You can't be no Christian. Cuss you out and get mad because you cuss me out and don't want to deal with me no more. And then talk about forgive me. You did that. You are held responsible. That blood is at your hands, Christ. Come on, you can't throw that on Jesus. Jesus. Jesus didn't tell you to cuss them out. He told you to shut your mouth. He told you don't say that. If Jesus didn't cuss somebody that was putting a nail through his hand and crowning him, what give you a right to cuss somebody because they had stepped on your shoe? If Jesus didn't cuss you when you his child and you were disobedient, why are you calling your children little MFers? The Lord rebuking, he needs to slap you in your mouth. You just like your daddy. You no good something. And then when he ended up growing up and not doing nothing with his life, you did that. I feel like I'm a failure as a parent. You messed up because you should have shut your mouth speaking out of anger. Don't speak out of anger. You better think before you speak because you curse your children. First of all, their father's not there and you their mother and you the only thing they have or you a father and you telling them that their mother was no good. You have a responsibility to watch what come out of your mouth. That's why divorce is at an all time high. Adultery kicks up, fornication kicks up, uh, unforgiveness kicks up to break up the family structure so God can mess up the kids. So when you get older, you don't deal with this person when they eat little, they become a giant. You can't tell them nothing. It take a David to knock these giants in the head with a smooth stone so you can deal with them. Some of these kids act like they, oh God, where in the heck do, do, a, do a son or daughter ever think they get a right to put their hands on their mother or father? If you, if you, if you touch me, I'm calling the police. Look at, look at this setup. The Bible says, if you spare the rod, you spoil your child. God told you, hit him. <laughs> God told you, hit them Negroes. Cause if you don't hit them, then he said, if you don't hit them in their flesh and hurt their feelings now, then when they get older, I'm gonna have to judge them for the stuff you don't deal with. So a lot of a lot of kids are gonna go to the lake of fire if somebody don't chasten them. And so when they get a chance to come to the church, and the pastors want to put them up there because they gifted and not deal with them. I rebuke the heck out of these Negroes. They get mad, they're gonna have to deal with it. I'm not talking to you till you change a little stinking attitude. Your mama should have dealt with it. I'm not gonna deal with it. I'm not gonna put up with it. That's not my job. I'm this is not the boys and girls club. This is ministry, and we have to develop warriors, not little. Mm. This ain't the Girl Scouts. We don't need you selling cookies. We need you preaching the gospel. You ain't giving out peanut butter cookies and getting donations. Your job is to preach the gospel and turn people from sin, not give them a bunch of treats. People are sinning and going to hell. Stop telling them that it's okay and the Lord understands why they're sitting up there fornicating, why they're sitting up there smoking drugs, why they're sitting up destroying their life, sleeping with men and men, women and women, doing all this illegal stuff. It's going to come back to haunt them. Can, can, can I touch on something that's going to hurt? Watch this. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. Mm -mm -mm. All these people with these roommates, you better watch who you roommate with. Can the church say amen? <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> Watch this. 
It's gonna hurt somebody's feelings. Let me tell you, let me tell you a lesson I learned. When I when I had I went through the most spiritual warfare I ever went through when I lived in my house in Inglewood. Because I was allowing people to come to my house. I didn't understand about letting people come to your house. You have to deal with whatever spirit that that person deals with. Uh oh, uh oh. Ooh. So you can't just let everybody come to your home. Got to say peace to this house. Hold on. What is that? Hold on, watch this. Let me tell them what it come up on the computer. Hold on one second. Second mm. Timothy 4 and 3. Somebody grab that. Okay, hold on. Yep, hold on one second. I know it's right here. Okay, 2 Timothy 4, 3, and it reads, it says, For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires. Well, I just felt like the Lord led, I, I felt, I felt, I felt. <laughs> God didn't tell you to feel. He said, by faith, <laughs> either you know or you felt it. You know what you feel changes. When it's hot outside, you feel hot. When it's cold outside, you feel cold. But what did the Lord say? He didn't ask you what you felt. What did he say? See, people are teaching doctrine based off of feeling. I feel like we just too being too hard on the homosexual community. No, ain't nobody being too hard. They need to be confronted with the truth. I come from that community. Then what? If the truth is the truth, it'll set you free if you receive it. If somebody tells you the truth, receive the truth for what it is. Don't let nobody lie to you. God created us to have family. God created us for men and women to be together to birth forth children. It's the most beautiful blessing. So what the enemy does is he gets you caught up in homosexuality and lesbianism or whatever perversion you caught up in so you don't ever get a chance to enjoy that greatest gift. The greatest gift I ever have my son and my wife. I would have missed it running around, sitting around fornicating. See, I ain't ashamed of it. It's called a testimony. But I would have I would have missed that great gift of family. Being able to see my but being able to see God bring every promise because I trust in him. And God to do if God did that for me, God to do that for anybody. So, so can't nobody tell me God can't do it and do the change in your life. You have to be willing to accept the change. So God let you do, He'll let you get good and confused. We keep trying to keep trying to make a relationship work that ain't gonna work. It ain't meant to work. You can try to fall in love as long as you want to, but it's a lie. That whole relationship is built on a lie. Yes, you love the person, but it's not God's love. So people are getting phileo love mixed with eros love. So people are, are having eros love with people they should be having phileo love with. Phileo love is the love of friendship. Eros love is the intimate love. Uh-huh. So people who God, you know, I feel that we, you know, I just feel that we meant to be together forever. You are meant to be as a friend, not as a husband or a wife. You got it twisted. Because mm -mm. <laughs> the Bible says you got to let patience have its perfect work. You got to see the thing all the way out. It's people who is meant to be best friends that got together and got married and they, they working, but they had to go through a whole lot of stuff. It don't mean that they in sin because you got to be equally yoked with somebody. See, if somebody your friend, if, if somebody is meant to be with you as a wife or a husband, then you got to be able to respect their friendship, first of all, because you, you got to be friends first. Because you got to be able to tell your friend the truth. How many of you would appreciate a friend and let you go outside Mitch match or something? Something was on the back of your skirt or on the back of your t-shirt. It's a big stain. They didn't say nothing. They were just laughing the whole time. You'd be pretty mad about them. You let me go to the whole mall like this and you ain't say nothing? Oh, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. 
yeah, you heard, you, you didn't you didn't hurt my feelings, but now I'm embarrassed because all the people that saw this fall on me. See, if we Christians and we friends, we should be able to correct one another in godly in godly love. So watch what the Bible says. It says in, in, instead to suit their own desires, they will gather around. They will how you gonna gather around your? That's like you going to school and picking your teacher. That's what they're doing in high school right now. I don't like this teacher. I'm going to this class because this teacher don't teach us hard. <laughs> And skipping lessons because the person that was ordained to teach you, you didn't want them to teach you, but you wanted an easy teacher. You missed your lesson. So, yeah, you got to high school, but you didn't learn the life lessons you were supposed to learn. Stop trying to take the easy way out. Come on, Christian. Stop trying to take the easy way out. It says they will suit. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Your ear want to hear that it's okay to sin. So I want, I want somebody that's going to preach strong against divorce. I want, I want them to just say it's okay to just give up on them. Just just say it's, no, say it's, I want you to say it's okay. I want you to say it's okay. No, no, say it's okay. Say, say, say I can have a right. Come on. But what about with that? Well, they slept around on me. Okay, and God going to deal with them for sleeping around. But God going to also deal with you about your unforgiveness. The, the, Jesus said he hates divorce. He said, no, he said, I hate divorce. Only, only reason I allow divorce because your heart is so hard. So how are you talking about you spiritual and you sensitive? You so loving. You can forgive everybody in the church, but you can't forgive somebody that you're supposed to be connected to for the rest of your life. Come on. I'm sorry. But some of us is, that, that grew up in this generation as children for the 80s and the 90s, our parents should have stuck together. It's hard. And then he got to see another man coming here every day. I got to hear some stuff in the bedroom he don't want to hear. Mama always over there entertaining some other guests. Who is this? My uncle. This is my friend. This is your brother from college. Next thing you know, she pregnant by him. And now I got to respect him as daddy. Or vice versa. Daddy didn't, dad, daddy didn't stay with mama. Now I'm seeing daddy with all these different women. And so as a son, I see that and I duplicate that same thing. As a younger, I see my mama, it just, I just keep in, entertaining them. And I keep saying that this is my brother, this is my friend. Next thing you know, they're sleeping with me. It's because we learned that. Oh, yes. <laughs> see, parents have a big, man, parents have one of the biggest responsibilities in all. See, that's, parents have the, one of the biggest responsibilities in the kingdom of heaven. Because a lot of things people in the church wouldn't have to deal with if the parents were standing in their place of authority. But what happened? And then what happens is the parents were standing in their place of authority. They should have learned a long, long time ago the value of sex. Sex is just not for your feeling. That is to come together to bring life together with that person. The feeling is just the whipped cream. You know, that's just the icing on the cake. But you are coming together with a person to what? To bring life together with this person. So you got to be able to appreciate the values in the person. We don't get a time to enjoy. I don't know why God going go here. But we don't get a time to enjoy the values that a person brings to the table. We don't even know who they are. We want to sleep with them. 